Hi guys! Welcome to my educational vlog. I am Kathleen May F. Archua, a second year medical technology student in the University of Cebu College of Medical Technology. So as a requirement in the midterm for a result course, I will quickly share to you what I have learned throughout this semester. Basically, result course is necessary for all college students to take up since it is a law here in the Philippines. It is known as the Republic Act 1425 or also known as the Rizal Law. So even if you take up medicine, law, engineering, fashion designing, or whatever, no one is exempted in the law. So you have to take up Rizal when you reach college. So it was sponsored by Senator Claro M. Recto and filed by Jose P. Laurel in April 3, 1956. So the main agenda for this video is to talk about the changes and developments in the 19th century Philippines. Everything that I will be talking about in this video are based on my personal observations and opinions and also in my research. My references are linked down below if you want to learn more. So let's get it on. In the 19th century, we were under the feudalistic and manipulative reign of the Spaniards. As we all know, we were colonized by the Spaniards for 333 years. And the people in the Philippines were classified into three different groups based on your social status. So we will discuss each of them. So first, of course, the highest class. The highest class is composed of the Spaniards and the Spanish friars. So they totally ruled the Philippines. Um, nowadays, we can compare them as like the president of the country. Like they control the Philippines, yeah. And they do whatever they want. They, they implement laws. They provide rules and regulations to follow by the the pretty people underneath the social status so next is the peninsulares or peninsulares i don't know so they are the government employees and they are the least among the social classes because the spaniards were very meticulous of the people that they want to belong in the government because the very the government before was very secretive and they didn't want any, you know, unnecessary exposure with the secrets. So, yes. Lastly are the friars. This include the Filipino friars, like the religious group. So they are among the higher classes in the social status. So look to review, the people that belong in the highest class are the Spaniards and the Spanish friars. Second are the Peninsulares or Peninsulares. Third are the Friars. This includes the Filipino Friars or the religious group. So next are the ones that belong in the middle class. So these are the Mestizos. Mestizos are the hybrid of Filipino with some blood of the European or Chinese ancestry. And lastly, the third social class is the lowest class these are the indios these are the f pure filipinos mm -hmm. they really treat us as the lowest class in our own country so again to review in the highest class we have the spaniards and the spanish friars as well as your filipino friars and Peninsulares or Peninsulares. In the middle class, you have your native native Filipino and the Mestizos, and lastly, in the lowest class, the Indios. So the Philippines undergone abuses in the political and administrative systems. The Spaniards claim their taxes, and they work under the Spaniards who are already in the position. So the friars controlled the educational system in the Philippines during the Spanish times. They owned educational institutions, schools ranging from the primary levels to the tertiary levels of their education.
The missionaries took charge in teaching, controlling, and maintaining rules and regulation imposed to the students. A sense of academic freedom extended in the schools that was established by the Spain's educational system here in the Philippines. Learning in every level was done in rote. Students memorized and repeated the context of book which they did not understand. In most cases, knowledge was measured in the ability of the students to memorize, largely hampering intellectual progress. So they weren't really understanding what they're reading. They are just memorizing it for the sake of passing. Hmm, relatable, right? <laughs> However, in the late 19th century, the Philippines was already realizing its own identity. We were already embodying the freedom that our national heroes, especially Dr. Rizal, has given us. Hindi na po tayo tanga. Slide. In the midst of American colonization, o oh, diba, nakokolonize pa rin tayo, but Filipino <coughs> Filipino revolutionaries were still able to fight for our own independence and achieve social change. We were braver, stronger, and wiser enough to fight for our own land. Aww. Oh my god! Wow! I believe this is because of the lives sacrificed by our heroes for us for us to just have our own taste of freedom. I mean, it would be an insult for those who have given up their lives just for us to have our own independence and social change and we continue to become a puppet of another colonizers. I mean, duh! As a national hero would think, I died for that country and they continue to become a puppet, mm, fearful. So it was our responsibility to be brave, strong, and wise. In fact, in 1907, we were able to establish the Philippine Commission. Um, it acted as the legislator and the Governor General's cabinet. So like it was a breakthrough, it was just a glow up in terms nowadays because remember as I said before we were under a Spanish government so everyone in position, everyone in power are Spaniards so congrats and proudly it was the very first elective legislative body in the Southeast Asia. An act in 1916 known as the Jones Act aimed to grant the Philippines a total independence with the condition that we can establish our own stable government, of course. This act was made by the United States through Woodrow Wilson as their representative. In conclusion, the Philippines suffered drastic changes in political, educational, and social systems. The 19th century put the Philippines in so much breakdowns to let it stand on its own. I mean, we were able to establish our own stable government. I mean, until now, we still have corruption happening in our government. But at least, we have our own government, we have our own independence, our own identity, and own freedom. So they put us through a lot to let us break through. I mean break <laughs> The success of Rizal's mission may not showed up the moment he meant for it to be realized because he was executed as we all know. But as I am living today and part of this generation, I believe that he is successful. So Rizal's mission was to observe the systems in the European countries to liberate the Philippines for us to you know progress and kept away from the influence of another colonizers. The changes felt in the 19th century become an eye-opener and for us to look at look for the mistakes and of course do not repeat it we were granted 
with freedom from the lives sacrificed for our country and it is our responsibility to continue fighting for it. Yes, nowadays we no longer do the Himaksikans like the Filipinos before, but you might ask, how can we fight for our own freedom? Simply by electing the right leaders. This is timely because the United States are currently having their elections and ours is fast, fast approaching and by 2022 we shall announce a new leader or president in our country. We must not be waived by the politician's fame because most of these people have already mastered the art of publicity. We must choose leaders who can stand with us through the calamity, international discrimination, and global pandemic, like the COVID-19 that is happening right now. So to end this video, may the changes and developments in the 19th century be our teacher and our guide as we progress to the future. And to my fellow medical students in this generation, may we be like Dr. Hazar Rizal, would God's to initiate the reform in our country. As we all know, the healthcare system in the Philippines is badly neglected, and I pray that in our time soon as we serve this country, we can change that. May we get the support and funds that we really deserve from the government that we will choose on our time. So, See you in my next vlog, future frontliners.